just to follow on from the last two questions, um, I, I'm used to dealing with models all the time. So one of the, one of the issues I have to deal with is how does one validate the model? So you touched upon it a little bit, but beyond that, do you have any ideas in terms of how you validate the model? Because then you can actually ask interesting theoretical questions. Yes. Uh, well, I don't know. After, after listening to Tammy Smith, I was thinking that it might be interesting to go back in and do some, some similar story analysis like what you've presented and take that and see see how they come together, how they mesh. The problem is, is there are uh, the data, well, maybe it won't be a problem. The data is not, it's not, there are not as many chronicles of the U.S. Southwest as there would be of other parts of, of Spanish America. So I don't know if that impacts on whether whether or not it makes it a, a valid line of inquiry. You, know, you have very few chronicles that deal in the, the broad scope, whether or not that helps to validate. I don't know if that answered your question. Well, it, it, it did, yeah. just you know how you. Well, and then of course, <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't have anything to do. So Juan Luis is our is our is our intellectual and spiritual leader. So whatever he does, how he does. He's done a priest now. He's a really confession. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so, another question. Yes, sir. Linda, this, this is probably more abstract than than you're interested in doing. You know, cultural contact. But um, <clears throat> I was talking a bit with, with Andy before, who knows Duncan Watts and Small Worlds and Garabese and his study of how the internet developed and so on. It might be interesting, just as an underlying pattern, to see what <clears throat> happens naturally when you have a lot of scattered groups. <clears throat> who gradually interact with each other and form clusters, larger towns, which influence, and eventually get that this whole hierarchical structure in New Mexico dominated by Santa Fe and right. a few other towns. That almost seems kind of an inevitable process. And then on top of that, of course, are the cultural contacts and all the other factors you look at. But at least you'd be controlling for this kind of natural evolution of networks. Right. Yeah. yeah, I was looking, when I was trying to find the data elevation information for this uh, at the USGS website, I was looking actually at the road maps, and it turns out that Santa Fe isn't the major hub. Albuquerque is. Yeah. Uh, because Santa Fe is at a higher elevation and in, in, in more canyons, so it's like, well, I suppose in, in colonial terms it would have been the hub. Yes, but it's going to probably migrate south for a number of different reasons. That's why I thought it would be interesting to start then, you yeah. know, start adding all these yeah. you know, different things that are coming in. Just one comment or yeah. question about uh, again, the validation as well. Yeah. Um, if, if you do go that route, um, what in, the, in my field I'm constantly running into is something called epifinality, yes. which basically means that well, if you have a more a model with multiple parameters, you can get to the same end result from the same initial conditions by using different parameter sets. Mm -hmm. Or if you, um, you can also get to the same end result with the same parameters from different initial conditions. Yeah. So if the only thing that you have to, to validate or to compare to is the final set, and you, you try to infer from that the initial conditions, there's not necessarily, if, if you run into a finality here as well, yeah. there's not necessarily um, that, that inference is not necessarily valid. Yes. Um, um, I'm not sure if it's going to be a problem or what to do about it. Yes. <laughs> it might be something to be wary of. It. Yes, exactly. Yes, and that's, well, that's why I started. I thought, well, maybe I better ask and see if there's any any other anybody that's doing cultural maps and that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, the, the, if you have more than one, um, if you have more than one metric to compare the end result, if you have, let's say, two or three metrics at the final time to compare to. That might reduce the uh, the chances of actually getting the equivalent. Yes. But it's unlikely that the same set will actually get generate good results for all three metrics. Yes. Yeah, you can also, depending on how you end up with the result and what you can measure it as the difference at the end, you can always go back to the sets of initial conditions, and you can do a sensitivity analysis to determine how sensitive those conditions at the end were as a function of the conditions at the beginning. Sometimes you end up with, with, with places where changes in those initial conditions really don't have that big of an impact. Sometimes they do. So you can actually go back and do that. 
So it does give you a good way of actually doing that kind of comparison. Thank you. Thank you.